Well, hello, welcome on to this week's World of Zwift, the show that helps you make the most of your time on Zwift. So, here's what we have in store for you today. Men's 2020 Zwift Academy winner Jay Vine tells Matt Stevens all about his first Grand Tour experience. Matt Lieto has everything you need to know about this year's Zwift Academy. There's another instalment of A to Zwift. Plus Shane Gaffney has the latest from his Workout of the Week series. Now, if you fancy liking this video, maybe even subscribing to the channel, that would be super duper and greatly appreciated by us. And you know what? You're going to learn every time a new episode of The World of Zwift goes live. In the meantime, whilst you do that, it's time for me to catch up on my massive amounts of World of Zwift fan mail we get here at Zwift HQ. So let me just uh, drop it out. There we go. I wonder what it is. Maybe it's somebody asking me for a headshot or maybe a signed photo of my... Oh, no, it's a bill. It's a bill. Wow, that is expensive for hair removal. Okie dokie. On with the show. There's a big old bunch of activities you can be getting involved with on Zwift this week. The Vitality for UNICEF Group Ride Series is coming to a close by riding just one lap of Watopia Waistband. Not only will you unlock the Team Vitality in-game kit, but more importantly, every completed ride will help UNICEF vaccinate a child against polio. The final group ride will be on Tuesday the 14th of September, so get involved before then. Congratulations to all the Paralympians who have used Zwift in their training for Tokyo, including Zero racer Dame Sarah Story, who became Great Britain's most successful Paralympian by winning her, check this out, 17th gold medal, taking her grand total to 28 medals. There was more success for Zwifters in the triathlon, with Claire Cashmore taking bronze, George Peasgood winning silver, and Lauren Stedman improving on her second place in Rio by claiming gold in the PTS5 category. Congratulations to all of them. There'll be plenty on Zwift Academy in this week's show, but if you want even more than that, then head to the Zwift Power Up podcast, where triple Olympic champion Kristen Armstrong will be breaking down each week's workouts into bite-sized chunks. And if that's still not enough, then check out Shane Gaffney's blog post on how to fit additional training around your Zwift Academy workouts. As ever, all the information can be found in the links below. This year's Zwift Academy Road is well and truly underway. And once again, there are two pro contracts up for grabs. Go on, OJ. Last year's men's winner, Jay Vine, has been making the most of his opportunity in the pro peloton. Despite being in his first year as a pro, he was selected to race for the Vuelta a España. For Alpes and Fenix, Jay certainly made his mark, getting in some serious breakaways throughout the race and a third place finish on stage 14. Our very own Matt Stevens caught up with Jay to reflect on his first Grand Tour experience. Well, Jay, lovely to see you, mate. I know there's there's so much to talk about. Obviously, you've had a, an amazing year so far with Alpes in Phoenix. Uh, a lot of success um, within a short time frame, of course, because you've been you've had had quite limited racing. But just tell us how it came about when you um, and the, the feelings you had when you knew you were selected to ride your first Grand Tour at the Vuelta. Yeah, well, it was sort of something that I really thought was possible um at the start of the year especially being so late to europe uh, not having many early season races um tour of turkey being i think in april and that was being my first race of the year but still acknowledging the fact that i was going to be very green still in the european world of racing so we 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 thought that it was going to be a stretch but when i got pre-selected back in the tour so in june and told to go do an altitude camp. It was just once again, full focus on getting the best numbers that I could, putting the hours and training in and yeah, trying to get that spot basically. And so once you'd been picked and, you, and, and the date was fast approaching, between you and the team, what were your kind of hopes and expectations going into the race? In terms of your role, what was that to be? Well, it was, it was sort of a, a free roll, uh, like most of my racing this year. There was no pressure to do GC or anything like that. It was my first World Tour race, and we were going there just to try and learn as much as possible. So there was all these little learns that I needed to needed to you know, sorry, sort of tick off on the um, in, in my career, um, all, all the way down to I'd never actually gone to the bathroom on the bike in a bike yeah, race. Like right, I, okay. I'd, done, I'd done that in training, but I'd never actually needed to do that in a bike race. And, you know, that like, like all these little things that 
you sort of need to practice and learn and do. Um, that's why we we didn't have any expectations on me during or going in. That's for, that's for sure. My, myself personally, I really wanted to to have a crack at a stage. There was a couple of stages. There was three, I think, that I I picked out throughout the three weeks that I really wanted to have a crack at. Um, I think I got in the breakaway twice for the two stages. So stage seven and 14 were the two that I sort of selected. Um, 15, I was a bit cooked after, after 14. And I'd also looked at stage 18, but that just turned into a, a GC day. So, yeah. um, overall I'm, I'm pretty happy with how I went. So Jay, what was the highlight, the big highlight of the Vuelta for you? Probably the biggest highlight for, for me personally was the the stage that I was off the front with Bade and Giacconi. Like that, getting into that position after after essentially, I think it was like 13 days in, in, in a world tour race, to be in that position, be off the front, have the peloton doing their every last dartist to, to catch you. Like even though I was caught with 500 meters to go, it was still pretty surreal riding with Ciccone and Bardet, you know, and he now like classy, classy bike riders. It was yeah, pretty special. Yeah, no, it. I mean, it looked, it looked, it looked immense. It's been obviously clearly been a wonderful experience for you, an important experience. But the other big bit of good news, aside from your personal results, the fact you came out the other side looking pretty fresh, if you don't mind me saying, is a two-year contract. So. Amazing. First off, congratulations from myself, everybody at the world is with down the whole community. That is brilliant stuff. Um, so how does that make you feel? You, I mean, that must give you in, an immense amount of confidence about what you want to do in the, in the next couple of years with Alps and Phoenix as well, and your kind of personal objectives. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it, it was, it was, it was the goal when we got the Zwift contract. The goal was I'm going to come to Europe and I'm going to secure myself more time in Europe. That's basically what we wanted. We wanted me to stay in Europe. We wanted to stay over here riding bikes. So to, to be able to secure that uh, off the back of essentially two races, because I crashed out of Route de Sol, was was pretty pretty special. Um, and obviously to get the, the vault to start was incredibly confidence boosting because, you know, with a roster of over 30 guys that Alberson has, they had plenty of other guys that had plenty of more experience than me to select from. So it was pretty, pretty special and pretty humbling. I mean, and just to wrap things up, um, a bit of wo some words of wisdom from you to the riders out there from the Zwift community who are now embarking upon this journey. Cause there's, there's two people out there that are going to be riding in the pro peloton. One's going to be joining you, Alps and Phoenix. One's going to be uh, with Canyon Shram. So, we don't know who they are yet, and that's the wonderful thing about the Swift Academy. But just a couple of words of wisdom and advice to anybody aspiring to get to a similar position to, that you are at right now, Jay. Yeah, probably to yeah, never give up. Um, keep keep trying, keep pushing, and if you really if you really genuinely love uh, riding your bike, um, anything's possible. I mean, even if you're not going for the contract, it's. It's a great opportunity just to better yourself, especially during these hard times, you know, around the world, everyone's in different situations. It's sort of a way to bring everyone together um, and yeah, try and try and better yourself personally or to get a contract. Jay, it's been a pleasure as ever, mate. You take care and uh, hopefully we'll catch up very, very soon. Cheers, mate. Cheers, Matt. So far, over 100,000 Zwifters, including myself, have signed up for the 2021 Zwift Academy. And although we might not emulate Jay's success, there is still plenty to gain from the structured workouts, which have been designed by some world-class coaches. And who better then to take us by the hand and guide us through the process than Matt Lietto, who is back to tell us what week three of Zwift Academy Road has in store for us. Hello, I'm Matt Lieto, your personal Zwift Academy coach and hype man, and today I'll be talking you through week three of the Academy. I'll be speaking to Zwift's Kate Verno about why the recovery rides are so important. We'll also check in with OJ and Erica L to see how they're getting on with their training, and we'll hear from another incredible Zwift Academy graduate about how they've taken their newfound power into the real world. So, 
Week three of the Academy, you're settled in, you've found your pace, maybe you've made some new friends, and you might even start to see some gains. This week will be made up of a workout as well as a very important recovery ride. More on the recovery ride later, but first, let's see what this workout is all about. Week three's workout is called Lactate Tolerance. This session has two goals, enhance your lactate tolerance and boost your VO2 max. Enhancing your lactate tolerance will allow you to perform at intensities above your FTP or functional threshold power for longer. And boosting your VO2 max will allow you to increase that FTP even further. The session's hard surges coupled with so-called recovery at threshold will hold you close to your VO2 max over the majority of each set and push you to the limit. We've recommended you take part in one of the group recovery rides this week. I caught up with Zwift Academy program manager, Kate Verano, to hear how they'll help with those gains. Kate, so awesome to have you on. Let's talk recovery rides. Uh, why are recovery rides so important? So this year's Zwift Academy program is, is very prescriptive. It's, it's linear. You're supposed to start with the baseline, end with the finish line. You've got your workouts and then you've got your recovery rides to help you recover from those workouts. So you're gonna put in the hard work, but then you need to rest and recover, let your body adapt so you really feel the gains of that hard work you're doing. And how long are the recovery rides available and, and when are they run? We have a recovery ride in block one. So after the first three workouts, you should do a recovery ride. And then block two, after the second three workouts, you should do a recovery ride. So the recovery rides this year are, are nice and short and sweet, 45 minutes, probably gonna average between one and two watts per kilo. You really should be able to talk throughout a recovery ride. Your heart rate should remain pretty consistent, fairly low. Um, you're spinning your legs out. You're letting your body just go with it and get that essential recovery so that you're ready to attack the next workout. Okay, tell us a little bit about the routes that the group rides, uh, recovery rides are gonna be on. So we pick some nice and cruisy routes for uh, the recovery ride so that you're not gonna be climbing too much. You can really settle into that chill pace. You're gonna be on uh, the flatlands in McCurry Islands and then also sand in sequoias. So these routes give you the opportunity to just spin. You're not gonna to have to work too hard to stay up with the terrain. And they're beautiful. Kate, thanks very much for joining us and explaining a little bit more of the importance of the recovery rides. I look forward to chatting with you on the next recovery ride. Take care. UCI rider agent and founder of Level Up Cycling Movement, Erica L, and her training buddy, OJ Borg, have been documenting their ups and downs as they take part in Zwift Academy for the very first time. It's week three and I'm disappointed we haven't yet seen OJ break down in tears, but there's still time. Let's see how they got on this week. Workout number three is lactate tolerance. The purpose of this workout is to increase your overall endurance, be able to deliver those short surges, as well as increase your VO2 max overall. The more my body can tolerate the lactate that builds up in it, the faster I will go basically. That's what this is about. It's in moments like these that my training partner becomes very important. OJ, are you ready? I've got a few seconds to go. I feel like I can crush this. Let's go, OJ. First interval, here we go. This will for sure help me out on the road. Whew. Nice push. So this interval, interval number one, let's go OJ. Feeling the burn, as we say, basically tolerating your lactate buildup. So the more you can feel the burn, the more lactate you can tolerate your body. And that's what this workout's about. Interval number two, OJ. Are you still with me? Second set of intervals. Here we go. Let's nice get stronger together. Second set of intervals going. Had more than the first, but I yellow start them all, which is which is good. Interval number three coming up. One more set, and that's it. You got it, I got it. You got it, I got it. Do you have it, OJ? I'm gonna imagine Erica 
And imagine you getting after it. Here we go. Last 30 seconds. Ah. Talk about work. At the end of that, I could absolutely feel the burn. My legs at the end were, they were worlds of lactate. I just finished all three sets of intervals and I'm just so happy there's a recovery ride coming up and hopefully I get to pedal with the Zwift community. How's my favorite training partner? I'm hanging in here, OJ. How are you? I think I'm okay. Uh, how did you find workout number three? Workout number three was the hardest workout to date for me. I thought workout three is the best one I've done so far. It's the one I have enjoyed the most. Listen, the third interval, it got a little bit easier. I guess I said to myself, oh, I guess you lactate threshold, huh? It's, it's there now. So it got a little easier, the third, the third interval, but first and second one, it was really tough for me. And I, you, could, you could probably see it in my videos. <laughs> so you felt the burn? I felt the burn before the, was it during the first interval, somewhere in, along the way, the coach popped up and said, you should feel your legs burning by now. And I was like, yeah, I do feel my legs burning. And it was very, it was early on in the workout. I felt, and I've done quite a lot of Zwift races. And we know that what you want to get out of Zwift Academy is to have the confidence to take on a Zwift race. That one specifically was very much like a Zwift race. So if you got through that, you can race on Zwift because in a race every now and again, the pack will go up a hill, it'll accelerate, and you have to really dig in to get back on and then keep the power going to stay within the wheels. So I, I honestly think, Erica, that now you've done that, you would be able to do a Zwift race. That's awesome to know, OJ. Thank you so much for sharing that. You know, now I know just, you know, takeaways from workout number three is when I do a Zwift, Zwift race, do it at the top of the week and have my head all the way in the game at the beginning. Now, you see, because we're three into this now, we are halfway through our training plan on Zwift Academy. It means now that we need to get stuck into one of the recovery rides. So, Erica, I hope at some point, I know we're in different time zones on different sides of a big expanse of water, but do you fancy doing a recovery ride with me? I would love to. I would love to. I Actually, what made me hold on was looking forward to the recovery ride. Was it? <laughs> yeah. Looking forward to the recovery ride. So absolutely, I'd love to do a recovery ride with you. Well, let's get it booked in. Let's go. Well, Erica, as always, it's been nice to talk to you. You have a great rest of the week. I can't wait till we chat again after our recovery ride in workout four. See you out there, OJ. Here's a ZA graduate to tell us how they got on during the academy and how they've taken the power they earned and applied into the real world. This week, our alumni member is Nadine Howley. The 43-year-old completed Zwift Academy in 2020 all the way from New Zealand, using the program to bounce back to full fitness after giving birth. I just had my third baby. Um, my third baby was almost one, and it was time to get back into a bit of fitness. Um, I wanted to do something structured and have a before and after of my fitness and um, yeah, I signed up for the academy and yeah, it really delivered on um, getting me back up and running. What I liked about it as a new mum is that I could do it in my own time. And as soon as the baby was asleep, then I could, you know, jump on, have the, you know, the trainer next to the bassinet and I could be peddling and watching the baby at the same time. So it was, yeah, really helpful. Finishing Zwift Academy gave me a real sense of accomplishment. I, I didn't think I could do it. I didn't think I could do all the workouts and the group rides, I thought, life would get in the way, kids would get sick, I'd miss the deadline. Um, but somehow, because I could do it when it suited me, um, I fit it in and yeah, I was really proud of myself for finishing it. And I even went and did a couple of races, like real world, real life races um, afterwards. And that was a big deal for me because I hadn't been in a race for oh, eight years, something like that. And uh, I gave it a go and I did all right. So yeah, I, I was really happy with myself. And that's it from me today. I'll be back next week where we'll be talking workout number four. I'll be chatting to another expert guest. We'll see how OJ and Erica got on and we'll hear from another incredible ZA graduate. Now we're back to OJ in the studio. 
Thank you, Matt. And you know what? I am thoroughly enjoying Zwift Academy. And you can too. There's still time to sign up, but the longer you leave it, the more group workouts you will miss. So details on how to join myself, Erica, and the rest of this year's Zwift Academy alumni can be found in the links below. E for erg mode. Fancy learning the real meaning of pain K and elevating your fitness to the next level. Welcome to erg mode. Erg comes from the Greek word ergasia, which means work. Erg mode simplifies your workout, so your only job is to manage your cadence. Check the box when selecting a workout, and you can forget about changing gears for an hour. Zwift will take care of everything else for you. Zwift will control the resistance of your smart trainer, making your rest periods easier and cranking up the resistance for those big efforts. Erg mode literally forces you to work at a particular level. When workouts call for 300 watts, you got it. Whether you like it or not, you can focus solely on completing the workout, pushing yourself harder than you ever thought you could. If like me, you've already done this week's Zwift Academy workout and your thirst for structured training hasn't quite been quenched, then why not do the latest workout of the week? As ever, expert coach and my personal hero, Shane Gaffney, is here to tell us more. Tell me, Shane, tell me. This week's workout of the week is HIT. This week's workout, inspired by recently retired women's world tour cyclist Lauren Kitchen and developed by her coach Cedric Barr, features two sets of short and sharp intervals. Lauren's take is, I love power style workouts in order to prepare for hard one day races. This high intensity interval session gets my blood pumping and legs burning and when I can complete it and not be dead, then I know I'm ready to race. This is a great workout for preparing for the classics and more sprint style races. That, I'm afraid, is your lot for this week's World of Zwift. There should be plenty for you to be getting on with until we meet again. In the meantime, feel free to let us know what you've been getting up to on Zwift, how you're finding this year's Zwift Academy, or if there's anything you'd like to see in the show. And until then, ride on.